Tandale got Toss, her education. Just Tandale give got me, her law. Give me, give them to me, please. What the hell is this, Blair? Nothing. Just get, get out of my club. You're investigating Taylor. No, I'm not. But you're having someone else do. Aren't you? All right, I am. Why? What do you want to know? Your Honor, I'd like your permission to question the witness in his chair. Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. Matthew. Would you explain what happened after your accident on March 6, 2009? I was thrown from the car about 25 feet, I think they said. Nobody knew I was even in the car, but then my dad found me. And then? They took me to the hospital. That's when my life changed. Tell us, Matthew, exactly how has your life changed? Matthew, tell us about your experience in Lambview Hospital. Well, at first I thought I was fine. I asked my parents if I could go home. And I just thought I had a couple bumps and bruises. And then Dr. McBain did a couple tests on me. He checked my feet to see if I felt anything, and I didn't. And then Dr. McBain called a specialist. Did you find out why I can't move my legs? Yeah, yeah, we did. It's not temporary, is it? And was your condition explained to you? By the doctor. And then my parents talked to me. Can they fix my legs? You're going to have a full and productive life. I promise. Just tell me. Am I going to be like this for the rest of my life? Just please, be straight with me. Am I going to spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair? Worst case scenario. Yeah. Matthew, how did you feel when they told you that? Don't shut us out. I'm not trying to shut you out. I just, I just need to be by myself. My parents said we were in this together, but they weren't paralyzed. I was. I know. Right now, this seems like the worst thing in the world. It could have been a whole lot worse. You know, you could have died in that accident, but you didn't. You're still here, and you're still you. How did you feel? Alone. And I tried to be okay for my parents, but I wasn't okay. You know, you're the one that insisted on bringing Taya back into our children's lives. Now, didn't you hire her to win custody? No, I didn't. That was Dorian. I was in a coma. But now that she's back and looks like she's here to stay, I want to know every little thing there is to know about her. Taya has been in Star's life before. You did do a background check on her then. Star is big enough to take care of herself. Now it's Jack and Sam that I'm worried about. <laughs> Just drop it. Blair, there's nothing else to know about Taya. You sure about that? Well, what do we got here? Her, her, her bar exam records? High school records, it's, it's really fascinating. Well, wait, wait, Todd, what about all the other stuff that's not in here? Her life when she wasn't living in Landview, all that stuff. What the hell are you talking about? Taya Delgado, the missing years. She's hiding something, Todd. Who isn't? I know that she's hiding something. She practically told me when we were down in that basement and, and oh, it was yeah, done. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that all that from court. That's right. And it's the truth. She has a secret, and I'm going to find out what it is. You've lived with paralysis for over five months. How do you feel about it now? I wonder all the time if the life I have is worth living. But the worst is when I wake up, at least in my sleep. In my dreams, I can walk. <laughs> what do you think this big secret of Taya's is? She doesn't recycle? <laughs> That's funny. Right, right. Can't be that because it's got to be big, according to you. So what, is she a mass murderer? 
Maybe she was a man before. It is huge, Todd. People don't confess little secrets when they're about to die. Claire, come on. Why do you really care about Taya's big secret? I told you already. Right, the kids. Mm -hmm. Do you really want our children hanging around with someone who's living a lie? This isn't about the kids. And yes, you know it. it is. No. You're snooping around in Taya's life because you can't stand the fact that she and I are happy together. That we're building something together. You're jealous. Do you recognize this picture? It's the freshman soccer team. Is that you? Yes. I understand last fall you tied the record for goals scored. And this is the basketball team, right? This is you, correct? Yes. Hmm. You're something of a jock. I guess I was. Now it says here you're MVP. I wasn't that big, but the coach said I had a lot of hustle. I liked being a part of a team. Why does she have to put him through this? I think he's trying to make a point, and we owe it to him to listen. This is the baseball team, but you're not in this picture. Do you not like baseball? No, I, I love it. I play third base, but the season started after my accident. Uh -huh. Ms. Delgado, where are you going with this? I'm trying to establish the quality of Matthew's life before he was injured. The life he hopes to regain. Fine. Keep it moving. Okay. Matthew, let's leap forward to June 23rd, 2009. Did anything of any significance happen on that day? That's the day Dr. Evans showed up. 